Ramadan is here. Oh, hurry up, change yours and your days. In this life, are only just a few. Do a deep pray fast. This time couldn't be your last. Don't think tomorrow is promised to you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you and the mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate and the most merciful. All praises are due to Allah. All praises are due to Allah, the one who created the heavens and the earth and all that is in between. All praises are due to Allah. The one who rolls the night into the day and the day into the night. All praises are due to Allah, the one who gives life to whoever he wills and takes it away whenever he wills. All praises are due to Allah. Allah, the lawmaker, the legislator, the one who sends down the laws from above the seven heavens and then, or, and then orders his creation to obey them. All praises to Allah. And I bear witness that there is no other deity worthy of worship except for Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. Ashhadu anna Muhammad al Rasulullah. May peace and blessings be upon him and upon his family. And upon his followers. Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, Ramadan Kareem. Ramadan Kareem, my brothers and sisters, a very blessed and special Ramadan to you wherever you are around the world. Even if you happen to be far away on the mountains in Iceland, or you happen to be down as low as Argentina, far away, or you happen to be in a battlefield, in a war zone, wherever you are, I wish you a Ramadan Kareem, my brothers and sisters, a blessed Ramadan. A blessed, a blessed and honored Ramadan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us safe. And brothers and sisters, I wish you this blessed Ramadan at a time, a time where things are tough. But the reality is it is a blessed Ramadan. A blessed Ramadan, my brothers and sisters. Now, for the last two months, we have been saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma balighna, balighna Ramadan. Oh Allah, allow us to see, allow us to witness Ramadan. Oh Allah, allow us to witness Ramadan. And now it is here. Some of us didn't quite make it. Dying today or yesterday. But now it is here and it is in front of us. What are we going to do with it? What are we going to do with this month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given so much reward for? Are we going to make it a month in which we only are eating and sleeping and gaining weight? Is that what Ramadan is all about? Or are we going to make it a month in which we can fix our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fix our relationship with our Rahman Rahim. Bring ourselves closer, closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, think now about the last year, from last Ramadan until this Ramadan. Were you of those who was striving in the, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, trying to uh, receive the happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, trying to gain reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or were you of those who became lost along the way, who became heedless, negligent, forgetting about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and concentrating on the dunya? Whichever one you were, my brothers and sisters, what matters is now. What matters 
is this month, this time, right now. Ramadan is the month, my brothers and sisters, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us much mercy. More mercy than any other month. A month that mercy and forgiveness and Allah's pleasure is, is open. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in an authentic hadith, huwa shahrun awwalahu rahmah wasatahu maghfira wa akhirahu itqun min an nar The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that it is a month in which the first part of it is mercy. And the middle part of it is forgiveness. And the last part of it is to be saved from the hellfire. Is there any of us who do not want to be saved from the hellfire? From the fire that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for the criminals? I think not. I think that all of us all of us would want to be saved. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it easy for us in this month. From His mercy, He has made this month the easiest month to gain reward, the easiest month to obey Allah. The shayateen have been locked away since Maghrib today. Since Maghrib today, the shayateen have been locked away. Those shayateen that were whispering in your ear, that were telling you to commit these sins, and you may have obeyed them, you may have not, but they have been locked away now. There is no more excuses. If you sin, it is from your own self. And the gates of paradise have been opened. Opened wide with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Opened wide for those who are seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. Forgiveness in the month of Ramadan. Ya Allah, forgive us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, forgive us, Ya Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in an authentic hadith, Man qama Ramadan, imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that whoever stands in prayer, in the month of Ramadan, whoever stands in prayer, believing and hoping for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and forgiveness, that Allah will forgive all of his sins. All of his sins, my brothers and sisters, not, not only from the last Ramadan, but all of the sins throughout his life. But he must stand in prayer with iman, with belief, not hypocrisy, not standing in prayer so that so-and-so will say that so-and-so was there or that you wanted to be seen. No, that you stood in prayer seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure, seeking the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, crying, listening to the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this month the month that is greater. Greater in reward, greater in mercy, greater in forgiveness than any other month. This is the month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the Quran. It is the month in which we can change. The month in which we need to make a change. Many of the scholars have said time and time again that if you cannot make a change in the month of Ramadan, then when can you make a change? When can you? Allah has made it easy for you to change. The, the shayateen are locked up. The gates of paradise are open. The mosques are full. It is time to make a change, my brothers and sisters. You may have noticed, brothers and sisters, something that is a disease throughout the, the Muslim lands. And that is that we are living often under corruption, under oppression, living under 
uh, circumstances that are hardship, poverty. Poverty. And people, they want to change. Really, people want to change. They want to change this, this situation that we're in. But wallahi, wallahi al-azim, none of us will ever change anything unless we change this that is here first. We must change this before anything else will change. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Surah Al-Ra'ad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغيروا حتى يغيروا ما بأنفسهم وإذا أراد الله بقوم سوءا فلا مرد له وما لهم من دونه من وال الله سبحانه وتعالى has said that he will not change the condition of a person and of, of a people until they change what is in themselves. And that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes for a people ill or hardship, that nothing can lift that. And they do not have any other protector than Allah. These verses, my brothers and sisters, the verses of the Revolution of the heart. Making a change. You want to change the dunya. It will never change unless you change this first. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that is in control of the sustenance. Allah is the sustainer. al razaq and it will never change. Even if you have a hundred revolutions, it will never change the poverty until you change what is here. What is here in your chest. Unless your heart comes to Allah and you fix those things that are in your heart. Those things that have been placed in there by the enemies, by the shayateen, the things that you have heard and, and obeyed them. But first you must change here. Return to Allah. All of us, brothers and sisters, need to return to Allah. All of us have something that we can change. Something that we can change in this Ramadan. Every single one of us. Maybe there are those who can change for the good and can change things and do more good actions. And then there are those who can change from those sins that they were committing far away from Allah. But either way, every single one of us can change and this month is the month to change, my brothers and sisters. The life scientists, they're called life science. They say, these are people who study human beings. And they have said that it takes to make a change in your life 20 to 30, 21 to 30 days. 21 to 30 days. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created us has given us 30 days or 29 in the month of Ramadan to make that change into our lives. But are we going to change? We need to start now. Right now, my brothers and sisters. I want everyone, everyone who is watching, now to make the intention. It is the first night of Ramadan. Think of what you can change in your life. Think of what you can do to come closer to Allah, to fix your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because even if you want to change that is, that is in the dunya, it will never change unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes it for you. If we look at the Arab, 
In the time before the Prophet wasallam, the Arab were known as the barefooted shepherds. They were poor people, barefooted shepherds that roamed in the desert. The people of Persia used to take them as slaves and call them their slaves. And they would wander through the desert. That was, that was the situation of the Arab. They were poor. But then within 20 years, within 20 years of Iman entering into the hearts of people, entering into the hearts of the Arab, Islam, not the Arab, but Islam became the superpower. Islam within 20 years of Iman became the superpower of the world. So much that when the believers defeated Kisra, who was the king of Persia, who owned half of the world, when the barefooted Arab came out and defeated him, when he came and defeated him and they took the Ghanima, what they found when they came back to Medina was a, a carpet a Persian carpet that was so long that the believers cut it up. That's how much it meant for them. It was the, the carpet of Kisra. They cut it into pieces and placed it in every believer's home. Every believer had a piece of Kisra's rug inside his home. And when they did this, they did it for the winter. Before they had dirt, as a floor they had dirt. Now they were decking their floors with the rugs of Kisra. This was from Iman. This was from changing. Changing from those who were asphalt, those who were the lowest, killing each other and killing their children and their, and their women and their children and raping and they made that change to become believers. To be those who were on the right path. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the, the, the floors of dunya. The world of dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened for them. And also that of the akhirah. Brothers and sisters, we'll take a short break. And we'll return just after this break. Every year change yourself in your day. In this life are only just a few of your days In this life are only just a few Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh And welcome back my brothers and sisters To the program of change In the month of change Seeds of change and Ramadan Kareem, brothers and sisters, a very blessed Ramadan to you wherever you are around the world. And I know we've had uh, a big, a big run-up to this show, uh, Seeds of Change. And it has been really a great opportunity uh, to, to participate in, in the show. Because we've actually been doing the show now for quite, for quite a few months before Ramadan, getting it ready. And we have a lot of reports. Uh, but what... What we have in this program is that we want to make a change. All of us can change something inside ourselves to get us closer to Allah. And, the month of, and this month of Ramadan is the month in which we should really make an effort to change these things. Because the shayateen is not here. Shayateen is not around. So we can make that change easier in the month of Ramadan. And this show, we want to plant the seeds. We want to plant the seeds of change so that by the end of Ramadan, we are strong and we can face the world and not go back to the same old sins that we were doing. This happens often. You see people practicing very well in Ramadan. And then as soon as Ramadan is over, you find people... Uh, doing the same sins as before. This is a Ramadan that was not accepted by Allah. This is a sign that your Ramadan was not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we don't want that. 
We don't want to go back to the same sins that we had before. We want to plant the seeds and continue to grow all throughout this month. And we have, we have a seed. This is our seed of change on the show. And this seed we are going to plant now. And we're going to plant it here and every night we're going to give it some water and we're going to keep it in the sun during the day and we're going to watch it grow. Just like, inshallah, just like ourselves will grow in this month of Ramadan. We want to grow as a believer. Iman increases and decreases. And in the month of Ramadan is the month where it should increase to a high. We should work hard reading our Quran, praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, doing as much as we can, extra, extra prayers. So we're going to plant this now, inshallah. We're planting it into the fertile soil. And we're going to give it some water. Bismillah. And by the end of Ramadan, inshallah, we will have a firm plant starting to be on his way. And this is what we're looking for, brothers and sisters. We're looking for, in this program, Seeds of Change, to really change. It's all about change. And as I said, we have done many reports uh, in the Seeds of Change. One story that I've read just recently about a person who changed in Ramadan. It was very interesting. A story about a man who got married early and he was a drunk. A Muslim. A Muslim, but he was a drunk. He used to drink alcohol and then he got married. And he continued drinking alcohol until he became addicted to alcohol. He couldn't leave it. Every day alcohol. And this was an Arab. This was an Arab Muslim. And he continued drinking the alcohol and drinking and drinking all the time until so much that he would waste all of his money on this disease, this alcohol. In fact, his, his family was suffering. And he would fall over sometimes on his face in front of his children, in front of his grandchildren even. even. This was a person who was a drunk. And it got to the point where his wife said, that's it. I'm leaving him. And she was just about to leave. And it was the first night of Ramadan like this. The very first night of Ramadan. He went and he began to cry. And he realized that now from his stupidity, that he had lost everything. Everything that he wanted, he was about to lose. And it was only then that he returned to Allah. And he said to his wife, he came out and he said, tomorrow I'm going to fast. And his wife was amazed because this is a person who had never fasted in his life. He says he's a Muslim, but he'd never fasted in his life. And now he's telling his wife that he's going to fast. His wife said, okay. You fast. He went inside and uh, he, he made wudu and showered and he went to the mosque. And he went to the mosque and began to join the salah and then join the tarawih. This is a person who never prayed. He was always drunk. And he went to the masjid and he began to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said that when he was in the salah listening to the Quran, he felt that every word of the Qur'an was being directed exactly at him. Every word was being uh, forced towards him. And it affected him and he broke down and cried. During the prayer he was crying. And after the prayer he was crying. And he continued crying. And the people who knew him were astonished because now this person is in the mosque crying. Why? Because he was about to lose everything. And he returned to Allah. He, and he continued every day to go to the masjid and to pray the five prayers in the salah. 
And this is a person who used to go every day to the place of alcohol and drink the alcohol. But now he started going every day, every day to the mosque. By the end of Ramadan, he had got rid of the bad habit of drinking alcohol. And his wife accepted him back. This is a situation, brothers and sisters. 30 days of fasting, trying to gain taqwa, trying to reach uh, the, the fear, fearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, closeness of, awa, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This month is a month in which we can do that. Bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. And I want everyone to make that intention tonight, to change something. Maybe you killed a man. If you did, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make this night the night that you're going to change. Maybe you had girlfriends or boyfriends. Make that change tonight. Maybe you are a bit lazy in your salah and you didn't pray your sunnah prayers. Make the intention now to make that change so that you can become a better Muslim. So that you can become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love those who are committing sins. He does not love the sins, but He loves those who come closer to Him. And throughout this program, brothers and sisters and Seeds of Change, uh, as I mentioned before, we went out to a lot of different places and put a lot of reports together. And sometimes it was difficult. We were in hot weather. Uh, the sun was beating down. But we wanted to do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we wanted to do it for you. So that this Ramadan we could have something that was special insha'Allah. And insha'Allah we'll take a look at the first report. Bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. Ramadan is here. Oh, Ramadan is here. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. My dear brothers and sisters, welcome to the very first report. The first report of many, inshallah ta'ala, in this month of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan on the program of change, in the month of change, seeds of change. We want to use this time, this time when the shayateen are locked up and the gates of paradise are open to lay the foundations, to, to spread the soil ready to plant these seeds in this time so that they may grow and be harvested in the afterlife. The one who prepares now will receive the rewards like that of a farmer who prepares his land and waters it and chooses the land wisely then he will receive his fruits one day. Like that is the believer, that if he prepares his land, prepares his heart and fills it with faith and good deeds that on the day of judgment he will see his fruits. The heedless heart, my brothers and sisters, the one who has neglected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially in this month, the month of Ramadan, is like that of the person who plants his seeds on a rocky desert where there is no rain, there is no water, only rocks, not even soil. For is there any hope of his tree growing? But the believer who plants in the field that is fertile, the field that allows for growth, that for sure this plant will grow strong and remain firm and he will see his fruits in the afterlife. This month of Ramadan, my brothers and sisters, you will see us in these reports going to many different places, talking about many different subjects, subjects that we hope will help us in the afterlife. We want to make this Ramadan a month of change. All of us can make some kind of changes in our lives. Changes that will bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Changes that will bring us closer to the paradise. And what better time to start 
than the beautiful month of Ramadan. Ramadan is here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, brothers and sisters, to Seeds of Change. Uh, it's the program of change. In the month of change, seeds of change. And bi idnillahi ta'ala, every night uh, we will try to have a report or something, something that will help us bi idnillahi ta'ala in our iman, help us to get closer. And uh, we'll start by opening the telephone lines to the brothers and sisters now. Uh, we have uh, some different telephone numbers tonight. We have uh, 00201, uh, 02281563. The numbers are up on the screen, uh, and we're waiting for your calls to call in. Uh, maybe we have, uh, maybe you have a question to ask. Uh, maybe you're confused. Maybe you want to change, but you don't know how to change, and that's. A situation that many of us face. Uh, there's many people that want to change, but they don't know how to change. How do I change my life? Wallahi, if you do, if you change your life, you will find that not only the dunya but the akhirah will open for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you sustenance from wherever you did not know, wherever you you, you had no idea it would come from. And you will live like that of the bird that goes out and comes back in the evening. Or goes out looking for food and comes back. That you will always have sustenance with you because you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you. And it is time for us to make a change. So the telephone numbers are open, my brothers and sisters. And we are waiting for your telephone calls. And we want to hear from you. Uh, maybe you have uh, anything, a question, a story, some advice. Uh, maybe you'd like to share something with us. This is your time. Uh, every night it will be your, ta your time to call us in and to speak to us. The telephone numbers are up on the screen. Now, we had uh, Facebook. Uh, we have a Facebook page, uh, which is my personal page. And uh, that should be up on the screen at some time. Now, that personal pay, fa uh, Facebook page, we'll be asking questions, we'll be sending out da'wah, uh, trying to help us during this Ramadan. Wallahi, we have to make it the best Ramadan, inshaAllah, Ya Rabb. Ya Allah, make it the best Ramadan for us. <coughs> now, we asked a question, and that was a specific question, and that was, uh, what, do you, what, what do you want to change in this Ramadan? What do you want to change about yourself in this Ramadan? That was supposed to be the question. And we have a few comments here from the Facebook. We have Simone Barbares. And Simone has said, I want to change, uh, I want to change country. <laughs> uh, she has said, I'm so upset with my visa to all Middle East country. Was not ready in time so I sp to spend Ramadan there. Now I have to stay the holy month in a cursed country, subhanAllah. Wallahi, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for your sister. And just because it's a Muslim country sometimes, it doesn't always mean that it is blessed. Uh, because as long as we are del delging in sins, uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep us in this condition. But accept the qadr that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, and inshallah ta'ala, uh, inshallah I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, even though you're in the country that you don't want to be, to give you the best, maybe it is something that is good for you. Inshallah. The next, we have uh, Jainaba Kamra Sise, and, or Kamara, and uh, Jainaba has said, I want to be able to do the five daily prayers on time, regularly, and do more voluntary prayers. Subhanallah, I want to be able to do the five daily prayers on time regularly and do more voluntary prayers. Make the intention now, sister, uh, and whoever else is in that condition. Make the intention to do that and to pray your five daily prayers on time. I know often, uh, I see often 
especially in Western lands, especially. But I know it happens everywhere. And that is sometimes people are joining their prayers all together. You find sometimes people will pray uh, Fajr at Dhuhr, and then they'll pray Dhuhr and then Asr. And then in the night they'll pray Maghrib and Isha, or they'll go to work and they'll pray in the night, they'll come home and they'll pray Maghrib and Isha. Wallahi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made these prayers in specific times. And if you do not pray these prayers in those specific times, and you have no excuse, then, Allah, then you will not get the reward of those prayers. You will not get the reward of them. There will be prayers that you are just doing so that you do not get the iqab. And you will get an iqab. Wallahu alam. But you will deserve to get the iqab uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for not praying in the, in the exact time. So the sister has realized and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for her. Uh, we have Surf Hads kal Kalam. And Surf Hads Kalam has said, I want to be closer to Allah by reading Quran daily and prayer on time and prayer at night for tahajjud daily insha'Allah. And this is a great uh, opportunity, Surf, Surf Hads Kalam. Uh, Wallahi, I really hope that you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this Ramadan. And I hope that we all do. I hope we all get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have a telephone call. Sif Sister Khadija from Nigeria. Sister Khadija, Assalamu alaikum. Sister Khadija, Assalamu alaikum. Yes, Sheikh, good evening. I can hear you, Sister. Go ahead, Sister. Good evening, Thay. Go ahead, Sister. I, I, I want to ask about um, watching movies, people engage in watching movies. Is that the volume? Completely. And children, completely their attention on cartoons. Cartoons. And also, I want you to help me in prayer. I want you to ask my fellow Muslim, my daughter, is very sick. She is above 17 years. She is still bed waiting. I've taken her for so many years. Even last week I took her somewhere. We started taking the distance, but yet she she's still bed waiting. I want you to help me in prayer. And I have a lot of depth on my head. Please, you should also help me in prayer. May Allah provide for me to pay my debt. That's my request. Inshallah, sister, inshallah. May Allah make it easy for every most in this holy Ramadan. How, how old is your daughter there, sister? How old is your daughter? She's 17 plus. Se 17? Yeah, a 17 plus. Okay, inshallah. Uh, okay, we'll get back to you and the answer there, sister Khadija. We have uh, another telephone call we have. Musa from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum, Musa. Musa, assalamu alaikum. Are you there? We're listening to you. Hello? Musa, alaikum. salam. Go ahead, Musa. How are you, Sheikh? Well, alhamdulillah, bikhair. Alhamdulillah, I'm still alive. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Sheikh, I'm very uh, uh, happy to hear your uh, program. Speak from the phone. And, uh, and the, uh, the very impressive word that you said, uh, 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 if we don't change our heart, uh, even how many revolutions we make, uh, uh, will be uh, no use. Uh, this is, I think, a very uh, important point in the uh, recent days. Uh, I have one question I want to ask. Uh, uh, if uh, we have the idea to move to live in Saudi, uh, what's your opinion, Sheikh? If we, you think uh, uh, this will be strong uh, for all the family, uh, for our deen, because, uh, as uh, we know, this is a holy place blessed by the 
Allah. So what's your opinion, Sheikh? What is your job, brother? What, what will you do there? Uh, businessman. Businessman. Okay, inshallah. I'll give you an answer shortly then. Anything else, Musa? I, I mean, I mean the location. The location because of the 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 Mecca, Medina is a holy place. Do you think if we uh, more near the holy place is good for our deen? From what I have and found, also the scholars around there, uh, the education and the atmosphere. I mean, for the children, for the next generation to have the right uh, uh, faith and strong faith. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying there, Musa. Inshallah, I'll give you your answer uh, just in a minute there, Inshallah. Um, We'll go back to, uh, well, let, well, let's answer Musa first, inshallah. Uh, Musa, you're asking me uh, about uh, living in, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, what I have found in my travels, and I have traveled all around the world, uh, really, <laughs> alhamdulillah, and I have studied in uh, about six different uh, Arabic lands, and I have found that wherever you go, there are good people and there are bad people. And you need to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you, first of all, of the good people and to allow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah allows you to meet good people, to be with good people. You may go to, to Saudi Arabia and you may have a terrible time. You may meet the worst of people. But if you make a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day, Oh Allah, guide me to those who are good people, those who are on the right path, those who are from the Salihin, and you visit the Masajid always, and you stay and you keep your worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you go to the, to the study circles, you go to the study circles, you will find good people. But if you do not do that, you will not find good people. And that, that is the reality in all of the Middle East and anywhere in the world today. We have another telephone call. We have Sister Malik from Egypt. Sister Malik, salam alaikum. Salam alaikum, Sheikh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, bi khair, Sister Walaikum salam. I'm still alive, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Sheikh. You, you asked us in your program that we should make a change in our lives. Um, I'm, I have a lot of, tr usually Ramadan is a very special time for me. And I dedicate a lot of time to the Masjid and to the Quran. But this year, I'm so troubled. I'm afraid that I'm not, I'm not able to concentrate on Ramadan the way I would like to. Can you please give me advice? And also, I want, I, I want to know what it is I can do that Allah would answer my drive because I'm very troubled this year. Okay, Sister Malik. Inshallah, I'll give you an answer shortly. Inshallah. Uh, let's go back to uh, Sister Khadija before we forget about uh, our first caller there. Uh, Sister Khadija has asked us about watching movies, first of all. Uh, movies are the same as a glass, a glass. You can have a glass and drink from it water or you can have a glass and drink from it uh, alcohol. Of course, the alcohol is haram, but the water is halal. Uh, so there are movies that are halal, uh, that have been made by people who are halal, yani by people who, who want to make and produce movies that are halal. Uh, but the overwhelming majority of movies are haram. Uh, that's, that's the reality. Uh, we could say 95% probably, uh, maybe even 98 And that's the reality. They're full of music. They always have a love scene, uh, boyfriend, girlfriend. Uh, this type of stuff, when you put it, when, when you, you're filtering it in, and if you put it in front of your children, you're filtering it to your children. And they all have hidden agendas and they're all trying to, uh, trying to, to, to pass on their morals, uh, their ways to you. I will just take this phone call and then I'll get back to that question. Uh, Sister Asia from Qatar, beautiful Qatar. Assalamu alaikum, sister. Um, I have a question. Um this is a question from my brothers, and they wanted to ask you, why is music haram? And this is a personal question to myself. 
Um, I tend to get um, caught up gossiping with my friends sometimes, and I know it's wrong, but I don't know how to stop. Could you please scare me and tell me to stop? Sister, can you, I, I heard the first part. Why is music haram? The second part, sister, please. Um, sorry. Um, the second part that I wanted to ask you was how how haram is gossiping, and how can I get myself to, to permanently stop it? How haram is what? Gossiping, gossiping. Oh, gossiping. Okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Jazakiyallahu uh, khair. What was your name, sister? Thank you. Pardon? What was your name again there? Asiya. Asiya. Okay, Asiya. I'll give you an answer in a moment, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, getting back to sister Khadija, uh, she also asked about, so we, we, we went through movies. Movies clearly, most of them, almost the, maj the overwhelming majority are haram. Uh, they all have music. They all have sex scenes and love scenes and... Uh, fornication and encourage this type of action and this is something uh, something that is not accepted uh, by any of us uh, in, in our deen uh, any, any sheikh who has uh, any knowledge about Islam will tell you the same uh, she also asked about children cartoons uh, and uh, also once again uh, most of them haram but there are ones that are halal and uh, there are a group from Saudi Arabia, if you would like to go on to the internet, uh, Al-Majd, Al -Majd, it's M-A-J-D, and they have a variety of halal movies and a, a variety of uh, halal cartoons uh, on their channel, Masa. It's called Masa, the Diamond Channel. And they have uh, all of their movies and their cartoons are halal uh, and suitable for the children to, to watch, bi'idhnillah and suitable for the parents as well. Uh, she also asked about her daughter who was bedwetting, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help all of our brothers and sisters wherever they are who are having troubles. Uh, bedwetting often comes from uh, maybe a fear that they have, uh, maybe there's trouble in the home, or maybe there's trouble somewhere. Uh, so clearly, uh, you know, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to to, to help our sister, it's not something that is is, is aib. It's not it's not something that she should be embarrassed about. Uh, this happens to some people, and may Allah subhanahu wa taala cure her condition. Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Uh, we have the question of uh, Asia. We'll go to Asia's question. Why is music haram? Uh, music is haram because Allah subhanahu wa taala and the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa taala says. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخَذَ اللهم صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد لحوان يعني the word لحوان in this verse of the Quran in fact is referred to by the scholars as music music that is with instruments and there is other hadith talking about music with instruments music when we're talking about music we're talking about music with instruments but nasheed is something completely different a uh, nasheed is something that is permissible. You will find at the beginning of our show we have a nasheed. And this is something that is permissible. The reason, Allah knows, really the reason. But we obey because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to. But music was originally invented by the Greeks. And the Greeks used it as a form of magic. A form of magic to attract the people towards them. And they have a, a Greek... Uh, mythology uh, story about this music how he played his harp and he would attract uh, the woman that he loved to her and all these things and this is uh, this could be the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it haram because it was originally a form of music and uh, it is said that it is the it is the Quran of the shaitan uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Quran is of course the Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, then she's asked about gossiping and gossiping of course is a, a very major sin it is like eating the flesh the dead flesh well this is backbiting uh, and gossiping often involves backbiting uh, they're pretty much the same uh, and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said min husn al islam al marri turki ma'la yani the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that from 
from the good Islam of a Muslim is to leave that which does not concern him. Leave that which does not concern him. So you should, uh, we all as Muslims, should mind our own business and leave that, that which does not concern us. It doesn't have, we don't have any connection with it. So leave it alone. And you find that the West is filled with their magazines and their gossip magazines. And this is uh, uh, something that is degrading their societies, gossip and gossiping about people. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep our tongues away from this type of thing. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because we seem to have run out of time. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Qawi, Ya Aziz. Oh Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. We are asking you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with, with all of your beautiful names and attributes to make this Ramadan a pleasing Ramadan to us, my, uh, Ya Allah. A pleasing Ramadan to all of our brothers and sisters, wherever they are, under whichever conditions they are. Ya Allah, help our brothers and sisters who are suffering under the hands of tyrants, wherever they are. Ya Allah, I ask you, Ya Allah, with all of your names and attributes, to free the, the, the believers, to free them from the hands of tyrants, those who wish to destroy Islam, Ya Allah. I ask you, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, I ask you to, to, to fix or to, to, to give health to our brothers and sisters who are injured, our brothers and sisters who are suffering for war zones like in Burma and other places, Ya Allah. I ask you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to protect us, to protect the believers. Uh, I ask you, Ya Allah, to protect our sister Asya who is here saying that she's having troubles here. I ask you, Ya Allah, to protect all of the believers in Egypt, Ya Allah. I ask you, Ya Allah, to protect all of the believers wherever they are throughout the month of Ramadan. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Oh Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Brothers and sisters, that's all we have time for tonight. Inshallah Ta'ala, we'll be back with you and we'll be back every night in Ramadan. Inshallah Ta'ala, uh, six days a week except for Fridays, we'll be going live, inshallah, every night at this time. So until tomorrow night, inshallah ta'ala, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Change. Seas of change.